What's up guys? Derek from MorePlatesMoreDates.com. Today we're going to be talking about your first cycle and your genetic response to it. So, you know, you see the title, you'll know after your first cycle if you have uh, elite Mr. Olympia caliber genetics. Um, obviously this isn't a, uh, you know, overarching thing that applies in every single scenario, but what you have to understand is there's a lot of aspects that go into, you know, a top tier physique. And one of those is, you know, your genetic ability to put on muscle, your diet is key, obviously training. But in addition to that, even if you're, you know, have tons of potential as a natural athlete or whatever, and you look like you have great, you know, structure and whatnot, if you have poor genetic response to drugs, like performance enhancing drugs, uh, anabolic steroids, arms, whatever you're using, um, you're not going to blow up to the same extent as another guy who could naturally perhaps look worse than you do naturally or, you know, appear to have worse genetics, but his genetic response to drugs is far superior. So basically within the first cycle, you can typically, assuming diet and training don't suck and they're like relatively on point, Let's just assume everything that, like, weird factors like drug quality, we'll assume it's good, we'll assume diet and training are good, let's just assume we're just talking about the cycle response itself. So, if you have a guy and he runs his first cycle, you know, like 12 weeks, whatever it is, he if he has pro caliber genetics, like high, high caliber pro, not a guy who takes 20 years to grind to a pro card, I mean a guy who's evidently, you know, en route to being a Mr. Olympia contender, he's going to just mutate after his first cycle. If you go back and look at old pictures of, you know, Arnold, you look at pictures of Phil Heath, you look at pictures of Kevin Lebron, you look at pictures of Dennis Wolf, Jay Cutler, you know, some of them when they were, uh, most of them when they were natural and you know, before they start working out, they're just, you know, skinny guys without that much, you know, going for them in terms of bodybuilding. They don't look like they may have good structure. They may have good this, they may have good that, but at the end of the day, they're just, you know, like guys with a bit of tissue on them. But after their first cycle, you could tell within like two years, these guys are going pro and like winning pro shows. Like I think Phil Heath, he, I don't know. I think he might have. I don't know what the progression is in the states for going pro, especially back when he did it. But it might have been like did a regional show, blew everyone out of the water. Did nationals, blew everyone out of the water, and then he was winning pro shows like right after that, and that was like all within a few years. So you can tell when a guy, and if you look at him naturally, he's you know he had a bit of muscle on him, but it's not like he had he looked like a freak before he took the drugs. You know what I mean? And, like, look at Kevin Laverone, for example. He was just, like, a rail kid, just like any other kid would be. And then right when he takes these drugs, boom, he's, like, the nuttiest bodybuilder. Well, not ever, but, I mean, <laughs> for his time, he's one of the best bodybuilders ever, obviously. And these guys, their genetic response to these drugs are just is just so superior to that of 99.9% .9 of the population. So even if these other guys... Well, like everyone else who isn't, you know, top pro, even if they took the exact same drugs, did the exact same diet, trained harder even than these guys, or took more of these drugs, they're never going to get that same genetic response these other guys get to these drugs just because that's just, that's just life. <laughs> that's, you can't really do anything about it. And like, you know, within your first cycle, if you've, you know, if you have potential or not, if you do it properly. So it's, I don't know, it's kind of like a, an interesting topic because some guys, I think they're delusional in terms of, this isn't okay, this isn't to um, uh, dissuade anybody from, you know, or persuade anybody from just trying to not get uh, a pro card if that's their dream or their goal or whatever. I'm just saying as far as, uh, you know, some guys, they're, they're like 10 cycles deep and they still have aspirations of becoming Mr. Olympia, but they can't even win, you know, the regional show still. And it's like, at that point, are you just 
putting your health at in a completely horrible position for no reason. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm totally in agreement with if you love the bodybuilding lifestyle, like by all means. But I don't know. I think there's a uh, some people don't really understand that if you're destined to be Mr. Olympia, things just fall into place. And when you take these drugs, you know pretty quickly. Like I think uh, one of Phil Heath's first shows, he met Jay Cutler, and Jay Cutler was. I think Mr. Olympia at the time and Phil was just like compared to Jay, he was tiny. He had like first started bodybuilding. He was like a couple of years into it or maybe a year into it or not. Even one of his first shows is probably like, looks like he's 60 pounds lighter than Jay. And I don't know. Okay. I don't know if this is factual or not, but I heard that Jay told Phil that he has insane potential and he's going to become Mr. Olympia or something like that in the near future. And he he literally said to his face as a pretty much amateur competitor or like a brand new guy in the circuit who has not even close to the amount of muscle on him that Jay's top contenders do for the Olympia title. He told this small guy, you're going to be the next Mr. Olympia. And it's just because he could tell by the way he was progressing, the rate he was progressing and the way his muscles are responding to bodybuilding and the bodybuilding lifestyle that, he had the potential from the beginning to go all the way. So anyways, sport of genetics at the end of the day. So hopefully you learned something from this video or you found it informative or interesting or something. But anyways, kind of an interesting topic I felt like touching on. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplatesmoredates.com. Subscribe there. Talk to you guys soon.